In the meantime, Drake London continues to add to his NFL tape, 16 catches for a buck 62. So, so there's a guy that clearly, uh, and I'm not um, in any way um, questioning his uh, ties to the team or his engagement in the team, but uh, guys might as well play for themselves, uh, especially guys that uh, have an NFL future. Absolutely. And I think if you were to ask me who's the Boletnikoff Award favorite, I think it's Drake London. I mean, look, look at this. Like he's he's putting up numbers that are on par with Devontae Smith from last year. And, and we all know that Smith won the Heisman, uh, it, you know, clearly, clearly the best player in college football. I think, you know, f- very few people question his selection as the Heisman winner. So we're not talking about London for the Heisman, but the, but as the best receiver in the country, I think it's pretty clear. And the fact that he is doing all of this, you know, kind of on an island with with his whole team crumbling around him <laughs> without a, a really dynamic elite second receiver at USC. It, it's an astonishingly great uh, performance, what he is doing. It's like this one shining light in the midst of all this darkness at USC. It's something to behold. Matt, once you take in what happened uh, throughout the conference this past weekend and then segue that into the matchups coming up this weekend, of course, Arizona State with a big win against Stanford on Friday night. Um, how, how do you forecast uh, the future in the in the race at this point based on what we've seen recently? Oh, so the big, the big game, there are two big games, but the bigger game is Arizona State at Utah. Winner of that game has the inside track to the Pac-12 South that's pretty clear, especially with UCLA struggling as well as USC. So ASU Utah, that's a money game, and it's, it'll be the first Utah home game since the tragic shooting and death of Aaron Lowe. So that's going to be a very emotional crowd. It's a night game in Salt Lake City. It's historically the kind of situation in which Utah does very well against Pac-12 South opponents. But Arizona State's offensive line which demolished UCLA a few weeks ago and was also very good against Stanford. You know, that is exactly the kind of team and the kind of style of offense which can silence uh, a partisan crowd in a row game. If your offensive line can mash, can lean on the opponents, like that'll take an opposing crowd right out of the game. So it's a fascinating set of contrasts in that game. Uh, I can see it going uh, either way, but uh, like the winner of that game very likely is going to be your Pac-12 South Champion, And then the other really interesting game is UCLA at Washington. I'm surprised to see Washington as a favorite. You might recall, Mark, that uh, Washington opened as a two-and-a-half, three-point favorite against Oregon State a few weeks ago. The line moved all the way to Oregon State pl- uh, minus 2.5 at kickoff time because people saw that, you know, Washington's offense is terrible. Washington, you know, Washington is still getting a lot of respect based on its preseason reputation and that's showing up here against UCLA being an outright favorite uh I know that UCLA has struggled I mean UCLA got crushed by Arizona State played a very sloppy game in Arizona so I can certainly see Washington uh winning this game but Washington's bad Washington has a terrible offense uh so I saw a tweet on the other uh, the other day where in a lot of offensive metrics in terms of uh adjusted yards per play, um, and, and various other things. Washington ranks 88th, 90th, 95th in these various rushing and passing metrics. So does that does that team and does that offense deserve the benefit of the doubt against a UCLA team, which, you know, again, not playing well, but it won at Stanford, and that's something Oregon didn't do. Uh, UCLA is, you know, struggling, but UCLA isn't a terrible team. I would certainly say that Washington's a few notches worse, but – to get to the significance of this game, Mark, like this is a hot seat game. The loser of this game, Chip Kelly of UCLA versus Jimmy Lake of Washington. The loser of this game is definitely on a hot seat or, or at least very close to it. Washington uh, can't really uh, even rely on a, a bull bid at this point. It, it needs to win this UCLA game to feel somewhat confident that it can make a bowl game. If Washington goes five and seven, I don't care that Jimmy Lake's been on the job only two years as head coach, like that is wildly underperforming, assuming Washington doesn't make a bowl bid. The Huskies would really need to consider this and to kind of make a USC tie in here, Mark. If USC is hiring a rock star head coach and you're at Washington or UCLA, you just can't watch USC hire an elite coach and stand pat with 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 uh, Chip Kelly after going seven and five or Jimmy Lake going five and seven. 
No, you need to mix things up. You need to get your guy. You need to get a guy who's going to be competitive. Um, so it's a it's a fascinating hot seat game in Seattle, uh, UCLA and Washington. Really fascinated about that game as well as ASU versus Utah, the marquee matchup of the week. I was just sad to see Oregon State fall from the ranks of the unbeaten in the Pac-12 and suffer their first loss, but they still have a fighting chance and, of course, uh, could make it all the way to the end of the line rivalry game against Oregon with uh, just the one loss in conference play. So I'm rooting for the Beavers to make it to the Pac-12 championship game. Uh, that would be intriguing.